Hiya, everybody. Welcome back to yet another enthralling installment of Jackson Facts. So, uh, it's 9-11 season. We're in September here. Happy belated 9-11. Hope your 9-11 celebrations went smooth. It's amazing that it's been almost 20 years since 9-11 happened. I was just in middle school when that occurred, and I had no idea. I could not fathom what was actually going on, whether it was the talking points of terrorist attacks or the consequences of rushing into the Iraq war. I had no idea as a kid what was going on. I didn't get into politics until uh, much later in my life. Around 16 to 18, I slowly started dipping my toe in politics and always kind of felt like from the get-go that it was a facade, a total circus, just a game show to keep us distracted and keep us running in circles, which I'm coming to find as I get much older that that is totally 100% true. And we've talked about here before on the show how reviewing the physics of the 9-11 event, you talk to architects and engineers, demolition experts, we're realizing now that 9-11, the collapse of the Twin Towers and the plane crash into the Pentagon, the other buildings near the Twin Towers that went down, these were all actually planned demolitions. If you're not aware of this yet, be sure to check out my video or the hundreds of other videos and documentaries that are out there. It seems like it's just people in America that are still completely unaware of the fact that 9-11 was indeed a planned demolition. Like it's not suspicious enough that 15 of the 19 hijackers on the planes were Saudi Arabian, our allies. Yet we went to war in Iraq. That's a huge red flag right there. But regardless of all that, we have some updates here, some details on the World Trade Center Building 7, how it didn't fall down the way the government agencies are telling us. Now, this is coming in from Ben Swan, very reliable information, usually coming in from Ben Swan. Love his little segment, Reality Check. Let's let him do the talking here. He's much more eloquent and good looking than I, so let's, let's let him do the explaining here. It has been 18 years since the terror attacks of 9-11. On that day, two towers fell in New York City, right? Well, actually, that's wrong. Three towers fell. The North and South Towers of the World Trade Center, also known as the Twin Towers, and a third building, World Trade Center Building 7. In fact, here is video of Building 7 as it came crashing down that day. Six years ago, I went to New York to report on a campaign to raise awareness about Building 7. More to the point, to raise awareness that over 3,000 engineers say that building could not have fallen down the way that our government says it did. Well, now today we're going to release to you the results of a $300,000 study conducted by scientists at the University of Alaska. Those PhDs have used computer technology to prove that the way the National Institute of Standards and Technology says that Building 7 came down was not only wrong, it's impossible. Furthermore, they can now say with absolute certainty that there is only one way that building could have come down, and that is for the entire core of support beams to fail at the same time. So how can that happen? I'll show you in this reality check that you won't get anywhere else. So it was six years ago that I traveled to New York City just before 9-11 to report on claims that were being made by the group Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. That claim was on 9-11, the third building that came down that day could only have been taken out through a total failure of support columns. That's what they were saying. Now we would know this as something called a controlled demolition. Take a look. And in a controlled demolition, when you have a core and an exterior, and you take the core out, it pulls in the exterior and it comes down. What happens if, if you leave half of them? So if, if, if it's not a controlled demolition, if you right. just have a, a failure of half the columns You'd have a partial collapse. Again, that was six years ago, and yet now on the 18th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, a new study has just been published, one that took hundreds of thousands of dollars and several years to complete. The groundbreaking Building 7 study, a structural re-evaluation of the collapse of World Trade Center 7, was conducted by Dr. Leroy Holsey, a PhD, as well as two other researchers at the University of Alaska. It is a finite element analysis that uses computer modeling based on the original blueprints for World Trade Center 7 to determine what could and what could not have caused the collapse. 
The study examines NIST conclusions and finds them to be untenable. So what was the conclusion of NIST, or the National Institute of Standards and Technology? Watch this. World Trade Center 7 collapsed because of fires fueled by office furnishings. It did not collapse from explosives or from fuel oil fires. We really have a new kind of progressive collapse that we have discovered here, which is a fire-induced progressive collapse. So to be clear, despite there being small and isolated fires on just a few floors, the 47-story Building 7 came down symmetrically into its own footprint in just under seven seconds at 5.20 p.m. on 9-11. The official investigation into the collapse was conducted by NIST. It's an agency under the U.S. Department of Commerce, which concluded that, again, normal office fires were responsible for the failure of the structure, saying that falling debris from World Trade Center's North Tower flew and crashed into Building 7 and then ignited small office and furniture fires throughout several floors of the building and that those fires burned for so long and so hot they caused thermal expansion and pushed beams off their girders, which led to the collapse of the building. But now this extensive study by the University of Alaska Fairbanks has proven that the NIST conclusion is actually wrong. Created a solid model in Atticus uh, of the structural members in the northeast corner of the 13th floor of WTC7. And a final element analysis was then performed to replicate the results claimed in the NIST WTC7 report that girder A2001 was pushed or rocked off its seats at columns 44 and 79 to initiate the collapse of the building. And it's not possible for it to move the girder web beyond the seat claimed by NIST. And they're saying it got shoved off and it and fell down. The fact of the matter is they didn't have the side plates on it. They weren't there in their model. So they wouldn't have found that. The executive summary of the UAF study finds that, quote, fires could not have caused weakening or displacement of structural members capable of initiating any of the hypothetical local failures alleged to have triggered the total collapse of the building, nor could any local failures, even if they had occurred, have triggered a sequence of failures that would have resulted in the observed total collapse. Well, this leads Dr. Holsey and his colleagues to this, quote, it is our conclusion based upon these findings that the collapse of World Trade Center 7 was a global failure involving the near simultaneous failure of all columns in the building and not a progressive collapse involving the sequential failure of columns throughout the building. Well, that failure of columns would mean that nearly all of the columns in the base of the building would have to have been taken out simultaneously. Remember, this is a building that on 9-11 was never, never hit by a plane. It simply collapsed. What's more, Dr. Holsey's conclusion does match a theory that has long been promoted by so-called 9-11 truthers, that explosives were actually used to bring down Building 7. So what you need to know is that in the history of fully completed and standing skyscrapers, there has never been a high-rise building that has collapsed from fire. It had never happened until NIST claimed that it happened at World Trade Center 7. What you need to know is that it took Dr. Holsey and his team more than four years to publish this study, which again used finite element computer simulations and high-tech computer modeling. And what they found was that despite the claims made by NIST, fire could not have brought down World Trade Center 7. The only reason this came to that conclusion was because they used wrong information to create their hypothesis. Now, here we're going to show you a videotape of the collapse itself. Describe that. Now we go to videotape the collapse of this building. And what you need to know is that the models that Dr. Holsey used demonstrate that there is only one way the World Trade Center 7 could have fallen the way it did. The only way is the failure of every column at nearly the same time. Good time to see uh, what looked like uh, a skyscraper implosion. It looked like it had been done by a demolition crew. It was almost as if it were a planned implosion. That's a reality check. Let's talk about it on social media, if we still can. So there you have it. If you had any doubt whatsoever that 9-11 was a complete hoax, it was a complete false flag event orchestrated by our own government, who seems to have been working with the Saudis to foment regime change and a war, a banker's war for oil over in the Middle East, then let those doubts be gone. It's been almost 20 freaking goddamn years, and most of the people in America seem to have no clue that their government orchestrated these planned demolitions and made it look like a terrorist attack. I mean, it was a terrorist attack, but the terrorists are our wealthy elite here in the United States. 
It's our own government that's attacking us. You should be really, really upset about this. When you mourn the 9-11 event, be sure to share with your friends and family. Don't forget the root cause of this event, that it was a planned demolition orchestrated by our government who then lied to us and continues to lie to us about what actually happened that day. Now, again, there's plenty of documentaries out there. Jason Burmis has done great research. Uh, ben Swan went more in depth on this topic in a recent episode of Tinfoil Hat with Sam Tripoli. That was outstanding, but the evidence is overwhelming. And it's time we wake up. It's time we stop acting like our government is too benevolent and kind-hearted and altruistic to have orchestrated such a god-awful false flag event. Because they did. They did and we have the facts, the science, the hard data. Laws of physics tell us this was a planned demolition. We need to accept that. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Just a little reminder, in order to truly honor the victims of the 9-11 catastrophe, we need to tell the truth about what happened so justice can be served. I thought this was a really clear and concise video. Just wanted to show that to you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below as always, and we will see you next time. Remember, the truth is just a click away. Later.